Here we go. Welcome everyone to a brand new sweet podcast. Yes, the name has changed this sweet podcast. Today your hosts, Zach and Cody Curtis, have a very interesting conversation today. They're talking about Walking Phoenix's Joker. They're discussing the Telltale Games, closing and remembering some of their favorite moments from gaming with them. And of course, it wouldn't be a sweet podcast without them debating or getting into an argument about something stupid. And today they might be discussing some guilty pleasures and what really are the best guilty pleasure franchises. But without further ado, Zach, Cody, you guys take it away. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Sweet Film Podcast. My name is Zach, and of course, my co my co-host here. What's going on? How are you viewers? My name is Cody. I hope you're all having a fantastic day because you've got a couple of clowns talking into your ear. And does anyone out there want a balloon? Because I'm giving Why you a so for free. <laughs> Obviously, you guys can hear we're talking like jokers because we are going to talk about the new Joker set photos of Walking Phoenix. We mentioned it in the last podcast, but now we have like actual makeup, actual stuff of him in the full makeup. We're going to discuss that. We're also, for you guys know, if you guys notice, I said sweet film pot. I said sweet podcast, not sweet film podcast anymore. It's because I made an announcement over on Twitter that me and Cody have decided to change the name from sweet film podcast to the sweet podcast. Same stuff, just me and him talking film, but also we want to bring in some video game talk, TV talk. And today we are going to be discussing a little bit of video games. We'll get to that sad news in a little bit. But of course, like we start off every show, we talk, we start with just rambling on talking about some random stuff. And I have something I want to talk about, Cody. And I don't think you've watched the show yet, but it's called Maniac. Have you heard no, of the show on Netflix? Uh, I have heard of it. I haven't do you seen know what it, it's a Okay, do you know who was in it? Emma Stone and Jonah Hill, right? Yes, and it's directed by Kerry Fukunaga, the man who, who wrote the original It script, directed True Detective, and is now directing the new Bond film. And let me say, after watching Maniac... 100% understand why he's doing Bond. 100%. There's one episode that there's camera angles with a certain action sequence, and it's amazing. Now, I didn't completely love the show. And I kind of want to bring it up on this podcast because, one, I'm not, I'm not going to do a separate review. I, I'm just not. I'm, I'm not going to do a separate review. It's, it, it's too late already <laughs> to do a review. It's too late already to do a review. I'm, I'm not talking to you. But I thought I would bring it up on here. So, Maniac. All right. Um, it's a crazy show. Crazy show. One of the weirdest shows I've ever watched. One of, it, It's like wire, watching someone's dreams and nightmares come true. And then you not understanding some of it, but understanding it fully. Like, it's weird. Like, I feel like I understand everything that happened, but at the same time, I feel like I didn't. It's a very confusing but interesting show that really pays off in that last episode. Because I told myself, as much as weird as the show can be, it, it it held the how the last episode goes and the last episode did not disappoint me it's the best episode of the whole season a actually probably the second best because the, the show is about these people who go a pharmaceutical tech to take like to test certain drugs and they go under these like mind things and their minds get put into computers and they experience weird phenomenons and emma stone and jonah hill's characters start connecting into this where they're in the same dreams and these dream sequences that they go into is like out of inception not as weird as inception well some of them can be weird but not as like buildings moving and stuff but they tackle stuff that is happening in their real life world within these fantasy realms like there's a whole gang area with jonah hill where jonah hill's a gangster there's one where emma stone's a fucking elf in like lord of the rings <laughs> there's it, it's it's insane i don't want to go any more detail but it is a okay. really interesting show that's really worth watching if i was a rated, i'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10 um i okay. loved some aspects to it and i really liked others it it didn't pay off completely for me i think i wish i think the show should have been two episodes shorter i think if it would have been just eight episodes it would have been a way more solid show they took uh the first three episodes are very slow and i get why they are but it took a bit to get in there but i will say the four best things about that show the score best score i've heard all year best score all year really gary fukunaga was directing 
absolutely fantastic directing. And the other two main things are the performances from every single actor and actress. I'm not even joking because when you go in these dreamlike scenarios, they're tackling different characters. And there's one dream that a Jonah Hill and Emma Stone go into where they're doing de- accents and everything tour de force performances. The fact that they played, they are literally playing multiple different characters throughout this show. Like they're still playing their same selves, but they're playing different aspects of them. And it is insane how good both of them are in it like jonah hill like if you're still not on board with the jonah hill train on this guy can do anything he can do anything same with emma stone superb both of them and then i i need to look up the guy's name but um he was in game night earlier this year and he's in this show too it's the guy who brought that one older lady to be his like date oh, or whatever right. uh, billy magnuson is in the show excellent I, I want this guy in everything now so so good okay and um justin therox is also in it superb sonia mizoni who's also in crazy rich asians earlier this year superb outstanding performances i'm not even that was hands down the best thing about the show and that is what hooked me were the performances the show could have been complete ass and i still would have given it at least a seven because of how good those performances were so Really, Cody, when you get the chance, binge watch it. It, okay. it is, it's a tough show to binge because it's a little it's it's really slow. Um, but I think for people who are fans of the leftovers, which leftovers is like top ten favorite television shows of all time for me, this is a show that deserves it. It sucks that we're only getting one season of it because I really would have liked two more, or at least one more. Because especially it, the ending is happy. And I liked where it ended at because I felt concluded. But I, w- I love the characters so much that I wanted to explore more with them. Gotcha. And I mean, that's awesome. I'm going to have to check this out because the way you've described it, it, it makes me think that it's kind of a combination of both Inception and Black Mirror. And I just got yeah. started. You know, Black Mirror is a really good, good one to compare it to. But yeah, no, I, I recommend watching it as soon as you can. And anyone who watches the podcast before you get spoiled, because it's a show that you have to interject into yourself. Like I, I, there's certain shows where I'll sit down, I'll watch the first few episodes. If it hooks me, I'll watch the rest of the season that day. And that's Maniac. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to get started at some point after after I get lots of papers the done. Evil Dead. <laughs> after I get I through the, the Evil the, Dead, the Dead film, films, you said October, you do not watch those. I will fucking stop the podcast if you do you're not watch see, those. We will go on gonna... hiatus until <laughs> you watch all the you're... Evil Dead films. You're going to stop our podcast that we're doing right now just so I can watch the Evil no, Dead films or if I don't. Yet. Not October yet. But okay, by October well. 1st, if you're not done by October 25th, we are done. All right. If I'm not if I'm not finished with the Evil Dead by October 25th, then we are done with the podcast. And I just, and I just mean the movie. Okay. And I just mean the movies. I don't mean the television show. That that that's that's going to take you a bit longer. But the sh- the movies, you have no excuse. That's 3 hours that you can sit down, stop playing Spider-Man, stop touching yourself and watch it. Straight up. <laughs> okay. Well, it is October and I have this this October I have really look like a guy with a plan. <laughs> I have been planning to watch more horror films this October. Just not not only for the sake of watching them, but I have articles to write. <laughs> but yeah, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but uh, before we get into it again, I, I spent a lot of time talking about Mania. Cody, is there anything you want to bring up real fast before we really get into our first main topic? Well, as far as shows go, as far as shows, I think a show, if people haven't already checked it out, is a show that I learned about because you told me about it earlier this year, and that is the show Glow. I thought you were going to talk about Queer Eye. I'm like, uh, I, I, dude, I can't. I, I can't. I watched the first season. I couldn't do it. I didn't like it. Oh, wait, wait, really? Yeah, I watched it. I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. I, I really did thought it was... I watched the first three episodes... I stopped watching. I was like, no, I'll go back. I finished it. I, I just, I couldn't get into it. Maybe, okay. maybe it's just because I, that's not the type of show I wanted to watch at the moment. I like forced myself okay. to watch it, but 
All right. Well, I mean, to each their own. And yeah, Queer Eye is one of those shows that I do recommend that everybody check out at least once. But the show I would actually recommend is Glow. Like, I have a few shows that I need to to actually start watching. For one thing, I do need to start watching Westworld. That is that yeah, is Ozark. on my list. That yeah, Westworld, Ozark. Those are Ozarks. The only thing you're good about Westworld list. though is that the next season isn't coming out till 2020. So you literally have over like a year and a half to watch this show. Yeah. So that's actually a very good point. That's a so very good point. You but I do probably catch up on Game of Thrones first because that's coming back. Way yeah. Soon true i think it's gonna be one of those things where i catch up on game of thrones after the series has ended though because Damn, game well, of I'm thrones well at the second it happens i'm gonna be like she died <laughs> because i've gotten through the first season of game of thrones and that's about it for right now but it's because you Pro know life I happens you this, right? i promise you this Hello. if you sit down and get through the second season you won't stop the second season is the one that hooks every single person. And after that, they dedicate the rest of their days to Game of Thrones till they're done. That's how it was with me. So I, I okay. Cody, promise me this. Before you watch anything else, I don't care if you watch Evil Dead, to be honest. <laughs> I want you to watch the second season of Game of Thrones. If you are not fully invested by Battle of Blackwater, we're stopping the podcast okay okay when it comes to okay i will do that but you got to give me a little bit more time than just the month of october because i have a lot of stuff to catch up and that's 10 hours of your life that's 10 hours of your life i don't want to hear you playing video games touching yourself <laughs> or going to see some shitty movie if i hear you going to assassination nation over watching an hour of game of thrones i will yell at you what if i go see first man over watching game of thrones that's fine that's something else <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I think we are getting down the rabbit hole, but Glow. Glow is the show I wanted to talk about because if there are people who have not watched The Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling that is on Netflix right now, you you're, don't watch it, you're gay. Did you say if you don't watch it, you're gay? Yeah. Like, who doesn't <laughs> like watching? I mean, even if you're gay, you'll probably like it, but <laughs> who doesn't like watching? hot beautiful women wrestle and act their ass off that's a very good point especially since the story of glow is so good and i've already expressed this since we are going to be getting into this that mark Marin, you know besides allison brie i love allison brie i love ruth as a character in glow mark Marin in it's glow it is he's so great and you know that's just going to be my selling point on this. For those of you who haven't seen it and you have Netflix, watch Glow. It is 100% worth your time, and I cannot wait to see where they go with season three. But Mark Marin, he's in the Joker film. So I think we should go and talk about Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Which is exactly I, you perfect segue. You were thinking exactly what I was thinking. We're going to segue <laughs> this shit. So let me go again and say, here we, we go. go. So guys, All we are right. talking. We are talking, of course, Walking Phoenix as the Joker. We discussed this last time on the podcast, but we just had that first still image of him, which looked cool. The next day happens, and it's him full paint and mask. Oh my god, it's Let awesome! Me, it is, and people are crapping on it, but I love it. Even if this is the final look, I'm all on board. To be honest, and I get it. Some people weren't on board, but that teaser. That makeup teaser got me more hyped than most trailers do in general. The music, everything. Like, here, I will actually play it, and we will show it on here. Oh, it's showing a um, Halloween trailer on my screen right now. <laughs> but it is, it is insane. I, it's incredible, yeah. Like, you just look at this, and, and just... I just love looking at him and you just see like the clown in the background dancing with the original purple shirt and jacket. And then it just, you see him smile, you see it panning in and bam, he smiles and then just goes back to a serious face. Beautiful, be be fucking beautiful. It, 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 it's amazing. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. It, it, no, it's I beautiful. You know, it's not just that. I mean, that alone is really, really good, but 
the TMZ footage that we got of the Joker oh, in the subway. The... Yeah, and you know what? I was analyzing. So did you actually see the actual set photos off of there, though? There were actual better yeah. photos of him. Yeah, and they in the amazing. makeup and everything else. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think people who are complaining with the makeup, if you see it in context, it works so much better. You know, I, and you know what I can't wait to hear, though? What, the laugh? That his laugh, yep, not his voice. I could care less about his voice, but his laugh is gonna make. But I, but going back to that set photo really fast. In behind, if you look at the 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 pictures or the things people are holding up, the other clowns, a lot of them say Joker for Mayor, and then one says Thomas Wayne is Scrooge. Like a lot of them are dismounting Thomas Wayne. Yeah, so. that's okay. That is really interesting, and this gives. And he's in the little... film. He's in the film. I mean, this will give a little bit more of an interesting origin story because, I mean, geez, knowing that, I mean, generally when you think of the Joker, if Thomas Wayne is still alive, generally a lot of people think of the Joker at that time period. He may be causing trouble in Gotham, but he's like a man in his 20s. Joaquin Phoenix, not so much. This is a much older joker it, it's gonna be a character piece and it's gonna be awesome and you well, know i mean he can be i mean walking phoenix would probably play a 30 year old to be honest he's not that old like the guy yeah. looks young in the photo like he's he was only born in 1974 like he he can pull <laughs> off being 30 so that. yeah so I'll tell you, not, well, i think everyone thinks he's older than he is but i'll I, tell you what honest, I, I think joker's only gonna be like <laughs> early 30s in this film that, if anything that's, i mean that that's very true. And when he encounters Batman, I mean, he's in his 50s for the most part. Yeah, so, he doesn't, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe half the time. I will say, though, if this film works, I know, like, they're saying it's a one-off, but I, I think we discussed this earlier. Maybe it was just us discussing it in private. Maybe I was discussing it with someone else. I've always said that if they continue these one-offs, which I really do think they should, especially if this works, why not do have john ham come in as a gr a very grizzled old dark knight like the dark knight returns comic the best the best comic out there for the batman in my opinion or do a killing joke adapt well this is this actually is rumored to kind of be killing joke so i don't know without the batman story arc but wouldn't that be cool if they tied in john ham like i i, I mean that, that's like that's like yeah. fan speculation i'm not saying it's gonna happen but i no, think that'd, that'd be, be cool. i think that'd be cool I yeah, it would be fantastic. Honestly, that's one of my disappointments. I, I love the fact that Joaquin Phoenix is being the Joker and all that. He's and the best actor I mean, today. He's the best yeah. actor working today. I, I don't like um Daniel Day Lewis retired. He's the best. I, I he's not my yeah. favorite. Like he's in my top five. But for me personally, Joaquin Phoenix is hands down the best actor working in Hollywood today. One hundred percent. If Daniel Day Lewis came in, he'd probably be second. But I, I go watch. I think that I think this is like top five actors like working in Hollywood today. This isn't like a personal preference. This is like legit. Like I'm being completely honest. Walking Phoenix, DiCaprio, Gyllenhaal, um, Hardy, and then I'd probably say Gosling. I think I think I'd, pr I'd probably say Gosling. Or actually, you know what? Take Gosling out for Christian Bale. I think Christian Bale right. and then Gosling. Okay, those are some fantastic choices. And I I'm kind of sad that Day Lewis did retire because imagine if we actually got a film where Joaquin Phoenix and Daniel Day Lewis were in it together. Imagine it'd be, it'd be what great. that would be it'd like. Be it'd but be yeah, good, but no. honestly, like all these actors say, I retire. If a role comes to him that he loves, you know he'll come back. Yeah, and one of my disappointments with the origin movie is if we were just going to do a one-off, I'm not gonna lie. I I kind of would have liked to see Joaquin Phoenix and John Hamm do like a, a Dark Knight Returns or a Killing mm -hmm. Joke type of thing. I would yeah. have loved for no, them I to have done that. Too. It's just I, I mean I get it. The thing though is I'm really excited because the guy who wrote this film did the wrote the Fighter, and I love that film with Christian Bale. Yeah, and he also wrote Eight Mile, the Eminem film, which is criminally underrated. That movie is amazing. I love Eight Mile. I love, yeah. love, love that film. Yeah. It's a really Amos good movie. Great. Yeah, no. Amos so. is great. And for me, you know, <clears throat> Straight Out of Compton is fantastic. Eight Mile is is right up there with Straight Out of Compton Actually, for me. I, think I, I like Eight that. Mile more personally. I like Eight yeah. Mile more. Even though I, I don't know, it goes back and forth, but I, I think it, Eight Mile's strong, but Straight Out of Compton's strong. I just felt like it was kind of rushed in the back half, but that, that's a different story. 
But yeah, yeah Joker, yeah. man. I, I think we're both really excited for this film. Yeah. To be honest, oh. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest right here. I don't think okay. we'll see a trailer before the end of the year when I have to do my top 10 most anticipated list for next year. And it will be in my top 10. But if for some reason I get a trailer, it might be Shazam out for my number one next year. Yeah. And I'm being I serious. Agree, and yeah. it, like right now it goes Shazam. And I know a bunch of people will be like, what about episode nine? What What about Avengers 4? <laughs> what about Avengers Stop. Just fucking stop. I love Toy <laughs> Story. I love Avengers. I love fucking <laughs> Star Wars. But Shazam is like one Brought of my favorite heroes story. in the universe. And Zachary Levi is one of my favorite actors. So fuck you. <laughs> I hope that movie's good. Which is so funny because like this, I shit on the DC universe like probably once a day. Even though I really like I enjoy all their films except Suicide Squad. And I shit on all of them. I shit on this universe because I deserve so much better as a DC fan. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope to God Titans is good. If Titans gets good credibility, I'm going to fucking buy Titan. I'm going to buy the DC streaming service and binge watch it that first day. Damn, I'm sick. Fuck. <laughs> but and for real. The trolls on the internet. Listen. Shazam is my number one. And if Joker becomes my number one, guess what's going to be number two? Another DC film. Shazam. But again, let me say this. This is going to all change easily the second I see Avengers 4's trailer. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the second I see that trailer, it's done. Same with Toy Story 4. Like, I, I predict we'll probably see both those trailers by December at the most. Yeah. At the oh, least. Yeah. Because it's they both come out event. in like May and June. Um, shit, well, don't count out that... Aladdin. Don't count out Aladdin. I'm excited for that, too. I mean, doesn't Avengers 4, doesn't that trait, uh, not trailer, but doesn't it come out around the same time that that uh infinity war did isn't it gonna come around may. end may of april too. early may yeah it's may but I, I believe they'll move it up to april again let's see if rdj can do, do us a solid like he did this year let's be honest it's all marketing it'll do it no fuck yeah it. they will it'll, i mean if they work. were like if they're like move it up to march they'll probably be like okay <laughs> no nah, they won't do the march because that's captain marvel man the, the, captain marvel oh, and shazam shoot that's right. Or, and I don't and honestly, I don't think they'll hit April too, because I'm pretty sure I think Shazam comes out in April too. But you but, know yeah, April. Yeah, they won't. I, I don't think they'll touch April either. I think May is the best time for them next year because there's not that much. I'm saying that now and I need to go check. I'll tell you, if there's one thing when it comes to what we're talking about, which is the Joker, there is one photo, one on-set photo of him in the makeup that impressed me. And that's when that's when he's not smiling. That's when he looks really, really dark and serious on set. I mean, literally, it was one of those things where I saw the set photos oh, and I was like, if God. I'm... What is it? I forgot this movie is even a thing. Wait, wait, wait this what? This movie is my number one film of next year. What this is movie. it? It comes out in May too. I I literally cannot wait for this movie. What is it? Detective Pikachu. Oh my freaking gosh! I'm calling it now. It's gonna be a great movie. It's call I'm I'll calling tell it you. now. It's gonna be a good movie. Ryan Reynolds is doing the voice of fucking Pikachu. Uh, so we're gonna hear Ryan Reynolds go Pikachu. <laughs> no, he's gonna go Pika fuck you. <laughs> no what if the voice of deadpool comes out of pikachu that'd be funny um <laughs> yeah next Ooh, oof. next may is actually pretty packed so mm. avengers kicks it off the first week then we got the tech okay. Pikachu the next week john wick 3 the next week and the elton john biopic with taron egerton the next week it's after elton. that and then aladdin and the minecraft movie come out and then the the May ends with Godzilla. My God. Yeah, that's strong. Real fast, though. Okay, we're done talking about Joker. I need to talk about something that I totally what forgot. That I'm so fucking excited <laughs> about. Can we please just get a little bit excited for Kingsman fucking 3 getting announced for next November with everyone coming back, Matthew Vaughn writing and directing. I, I'm yep. just saying... 
I love the first Kingsman. I fucking love Kingsman 2. Fuck you if you didn't like it. I don't care. That movie was <laughs> bonkers. Balls to the wall. The best thing I've watched. Like favorite, one of my favorite films of last year. I loved Kingsman 2. Okay. Eat my well, ass should, you didn't like it. This this should ease your pain because one of my friends at school, it is actually her favorite film of oh, all yeah, time. Oh, yeah. I remember. I'm trying to remember who told me that, that they had a friend. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's her favorite film of all time, and I can understand why. Was it one of my favorite films of last year? It wasn't top 10. I'd say it's probably top 15. I really enjoyed Kingsman 2. I thought it was great. Yeah. But What's better, I, honestly, first or second one? Better? Uh, I'd have to say the first one, only because really? the first one... Well, because the first one was such a surprise. I mean, See, nobody was I expecting think... Kingsman to be Kingsman. Personally, the only thing I think the first... I think the second one did wrong. Um, was I kind of wish they didn't interject so much statesman stuff in there and not touch on it more because it just, I mean, they're doing a spin off film to it. But, geez, dude, I'm so excited because I was so worried we were never going to get another Kingsman. I was so worried because this is a universe that I want to touch on. I want to go into again. And I'm so happy that they announced it with Matthew Vaughn coming back. And sorry, I did say he was directing him, but I, I, he's not officially directing. He is writing it. I won't be surprised if he comes back to direct it, though, because he's not doing anything else right now. And for yeah. me, it's like, why wouldn't you just finish your trilogy? You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, absolutely. Unless, unless you're doing something else, like maybe rebooting the X-Men for the MCU, but <laughs> but that's more than likely not. But I'm, I'm really I'm really excited for it. So yeah, I just want to get that up before we go to a depressing topic. Yeah. Um, oh, geez, dude. Uh, yeah. I, I so yeah. his perspective, we're gonna talk about Telltale Games closing. Um, we're gonna kind of go back, talk about our favorite games, their underrated games, pretty much go through their lineup. And just give a sincere thank you to the whole crew. And in a sense, also wish the best of luck. And my prayers are with you and your families. Because I know a lot of game developers, they live paycheck to paycheck. They don't get paid the best. Yeah. And I hope they get picked up. Um, so how did Telltale Games start? <clears throat> well, Sam and Max, that old game, that old point and click game that LucasArts did. They laid off that whole team. They went and made Telltale. And Telltale started with The Walking Dead back in 2012. And that game was phenomenal. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah. And we'll get into that in a second. <clears throat> but after that, they started really buckling down and doing a bunch of other games. And it, uh, th they obviously did like Back to the Future game, Jurassic Park, Sam and Max. Again. Game of Thrones. Uh, well, we'll get to that. that that's after. I'm talking about before. This was before. Oh, that. okay. But, they, but I mean, those weren't critical success. Like they were success, but they weren't like Walking Dead. Walking Dead won best game of the year that year. Yeah. And a lot of it, it came did. of their storytelling. And I will say, I always felt like they were getting a little bit too ambitious. Like, I'll, I'll be honest on that. And that's a good thing to get ambitious, but I felt like they were never reinventing themselves towards the end. Yeah. Every game was the same, <clears throat> which made me not want to play all the games, in a sense. Which isn't the worst thing. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I still love Telltale. I wish they would have touched on more games, though, and done more different things. And that's why I kind of hope they come back together and... It amazes me that no studio bought them. It amazes me that a, a juggernaut like Microsoft or Sony did not buy out the studio and take yeah. that IP and take them on board. Because earlier this year, Microsoft was doing that, buying a bunch of different studios for them because they do have an issue of not having exclusive games for their console. That's one of my biggest criticisms for the Xbox One right now, which someone actually wanted us to debate PS4 versus Xbox, versus One, the Xbox One. Which I know you don't have a Xbox. I, I have both, and I'm fortunate yeah. for that, but... I would still go with the PS4, even though I will say the Xbox is a stronger console. The PS4 has better exclusives. The Xbox has had like maybe three really strong exclusives this whole almost like five years of coming out. Probably longer than that now, but it's the truth. And I was shocked that they now hearing Telltale's out of mess. I'm like, why didn't you buy them? I'm like, you would have had a lot of fans. And that's what I think really hurt them in the end. But um, yeah, it, the CEO put out this thing saying it's been an incredible, difficult year for Telltale as we worked to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there, released some of our best content this year and, and re received a tremendous amount of positive feedback. They always got positive feedback. I think they've like, one yeah. of things was bad, but ultimately that did not translate mm -hmm. to sales with a heavy heart. We watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the game industry, which is something like, I hope all these people get picked up real fast, but 
Well, that's something where I think they're, without a doubt, I think they're going to, because after it was released that, what, 255 people got laid off from Telltale, almost every single studio, I mean, Naughty Dog. Uh, and you know what Ubisoft. sucks? I don't think they're finishing that's, The Walking Dead's new season. That's awful. That it, uh, it sucks. And I mean, that's not something that should be on people's minds. But I was reading... Um, like the voice actress who plays Clementine said, I unfortunately, like most of you, do not know the details on all this came to be. I also do not know the fate of the final season of The Walking Dead. I just wrote a message share on Twitter. To my knowledge, they will release episode two, which they did announce episode two will still come out this mm. week. And then that will be it. It hurts me that you, the fans will not get to see Clem's journey through to, to the end. It hurts me that all all the insanely talented people who made this game won't get to see all their hard work played off and instead trust into now having to look for work, which sucks. It, it, it yeah. sucks. Yeah. And Honestly, like I, I haven't played the last the new season yet because I, I was very disappointed with three. Um, but still, I mean, with even The Walking Dead being canceled, um, Wolf of Mungus 2 got canceled, a Stranger Things got canceled. Um, they were talking about doing another Guardians of the Galaxy one, they're talking about doing other Marvel properties. I mean, they they had fantastic ideas and. This is where I want to kind of go through their lineup, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring one up. I've played every single one of them. I I, I don't know about you. I don't know how many <laughs> you've played, but no, I played really? almost every single one. I played a lot of the Sam and Maxes. I played every Walking Dead besides the new season. I've played Guardians of the Galaxy. I played a little bit of Back to the Future. I played Jurassic Park. I played Tales from the Borderland. I played Batman. I played Game of Thrones. I played a little <laughs> bit of Minecraft. Like I played them all. I so we're it. just gonna kind of go through it. I got gotcha. you. Um, starting with The Walking Dead, we're just going to talk about the whole season in general. Which season did you yeah. get up to? I got up to the end of se uh, season two. See, I, I, I think that's uh, and the DLC and uh, four hundred days. Season two, up to season two and four hundred days. Season three, I heard mixed stuff on, so it, I it wasn't horrible, to pick it up. but it it there's I don't want to get in spoilers because I do think people should still play the games. Um, but there's a certain character that you can save in two. And when you bring him over to three, you, he automatically dies like earlier on. And I was so disappointed that they decided to go with that because but, I felt like that was complete BS, to be honest. But speaking of, I think we should start by talking about The Walking Dead season one, because it is what that's the game that on. well it won, it won game yeah. of the year. And, and um, it was it was yeah. great. It's still a phenomenal game to play. Oh yeah. So I'll be honest though with it. It the storytelling holds up. The gameplay does not. It's very hard for me to trudge through and replay some of these games, especially since the gameplay is not the fun. When you play the story so many times, like I've probably played this like four times because I've had to buy it for every damn console because I have to keep renewing it and renewing it and get a new console and, and move it over and catch back up. So I, I think I burnt myself out on the Telltale, but I still supported them. But walking into the first season, um, I'm talking spoilers for this season. If you have not played yeah. Telltale, I'm sorry. It, it came out in 2012. Um, see, the, after season two, I can kind of get it because those are a little bit newer. But 2012, it's 2018 now. When Clementine has the choice to kill Lee, that, I mean, Lee dying. That's brutal. Was very tough and clementine became one of my favorite characters which i've been praising i i really want them to bring bring so technically the walking dead telltale takes place in the comic book world and i really want them to interject clementine into the new stories or into the television show i think bringing her or lee in would be like phenomenal like to be flat out honest i think it would be so good and I've always wanted that because I felt like the, what Telltale did so good is bringing emotion um, to the yeah. point where I fucking cried at that part. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a good game, but I think the second season was better than one. Yeah, honest, I'm going to tell you. The second season was stronger. Not as emotional, but it was stronger in its choices. It was. And I I don't necessarily think I enjoy the... Like I, I still think the story for season two is strong. I think season one story, I think it was just so pure as a first season that it was just, it was so good. And I'll tell you right now, I haven't watched The Walking Dead since season six. And 
But if they introduce real fast, can I geek out real fast? Someone got yes, this, go some it. people have already seen the first three episodes in the new season and say it's phenomenal. So I'm like so happy because <laughs> the the next yeah. arc is like my favorite arc from the comic. So I'm like really hesitant since Rick's leaving, but I'm like yeah. hoping I'm like, okay, this is like just do your own thing now. Just do your fucking own thing yeah. now. I'm gonna tell you though, if they if the studio that is producing the show if they decide to bring in either Lee or Clementine, I will watch, or heck, if they bring Kenny into, into The Walking Dead, if they bring one of those three into the actual show, I will start watching it again in a heartbeat. Because it's just the power of what Telltale Games has done. The relationship that they set up with Lee and Clementine is so good and so emotionally strong that I'm pretty sure everybody who played it was in full-blown tears by the end of the game. And watching watching Clementine struggle in Season 2, I mean, the end of Season 2, the end of Season 2, the very end of it, for me is just as emotionally strong because it left me in tears just like the first one did. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I, I, I just love um, third season was a little bit weaker um, just because it had that character. I just didn't like, but um, moving on uh, Wolf Among Us comes out in 2013. Phenomenal. So the good. world, the world they so build up was like, incredible. Incredible. And now it's not going to be continued. Yeah, I'm just glad, though, because it didn't, like, leave off on a cliffhanger, in a sense. Yeah. I'm it, glad, like, I got a full story. I got the full story, and that was fun. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. If a studio... If a studio picks up, the like, an entire group of these well, people... Well, all these I IPs are just sitting there. I, 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 you'd be fucking stupid not to pick them up. But I, exactly. I, mean, I mean, if there I was a... I the works. I mean, I would love for them to finish The Walking Dead, but if there is one story I want some studio to pick up and continue the story on that, it's The Wolf Among Us. I would rather I, someone take the IP and do something different with it, though. Um, yeah. Not point and click. And Walking Dead, I, I really hope someone picks it up. I, I hope people, yeah. I hope someone picks up all these workers. I, I think that's the most important thing. But yeah, Wolf Among Us, the world that they created is, is, is special. Um, Game of Thrones was unique because it took place in between a certain period of time that no it was never touched on in the show so i like that it, i didn't love it because you, it, it didn't really affect much of the world because you can't change much within the top you know what i mean so yeah i, I, I didn't really love that one of uh, tales from the borderland to be honest i was disappointed and i i I'm a huge borderlands fan and i i found it to just be fine um minecraft i'm not even talking about no. batman arkham Oh uh, well, no, Batman the Telltale series. Not Batman, our... yeah, um, no, sorry, um, I thought was Batman called, was great. Right. They should have. My friend always says that they should have had a fee where you can order your own comic book from all your choices. Hmm. I'm gonna give him a little shout out, Carlos Padilla. You have a great idea, my friend. Um, but that was a really good idea. I I, I really like the Batman series. I really recommend it. Um, which ones did you play? Did you just say play Wolf Among Us and Walking uh, Dead? Uh, Wolf Among Us, Walking Dead, and I I also did play the the Batman Telltale games. <laughs> Oh, okay. or not games, but game. And I, I did think it was great. But, you know, I think that's actually not just a good idea for when it comes to Batman. If they did that for The Walking Dead 2, I'd, I'd order that in a heartbeat. That's yeah. I mean, and, and The Wolf Among Us, because wasn't The Wolf Among Us, or was that a graphic novel? Wolf Among Us was always a graphic novel, but I mean, okay. graphic novel, comic book, it's all the same shit. So yeah, like, what if they did that for all of their major releases? Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, and Batman. They just have it <laughs> so you can order a comic of your choices, but... It'd be, it'd be cool. It would be cool for sure. Yeah, It's too um, late now, but it's a cool yeah. idea. Oh, well, but also, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy was, was actually really fun. It was really fun, and it was in a completely different universe, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, the music was there, everything. It it, it it was all there. It was great. Um, I mean, their Back to the Futures were cool. They they did a lot. They did a lot for the industry that really changed a lot. Like I, it it sucks. And there's one game called Seven Days to Die that I'm very interested to know who's going to take over because they also touched on that. <sighs> it's so depressing, man. I I, I, I wish really the best. Depressing. I wish the best for the studio, and I wish the best for all the people to get jobs. Yeah, it sucks. It, it sucks a hundred percent. I mean, but with their all game, the their storytelling, well, 
always be in there. Yeah, it'll be early on for sure. Their best stuff was when they just started out. But it's like I said, I hope the best for everybody who was laid off in the studio itself. But I cannot see a world where the people behind Telltale Games, all of these 255 people, I can't think of a scenario where there isn't a studio that picks them up because these people are going to have jobs. So like everybody is opening their doors for them. Yeah. Which is awesome. Cause they, they really do deserve that, man. They, they really yeah. do deserve the love. They do. It, 100%. If you've never played a telltale game, please check one out. If you're a comic book fan, they got Batman. They got uh, guardians of the galaxy. If you're, I mean, walking dead is a comic stuff. book. Yeah, but I mean like superhero type stuff. Oh, oh, gotcha, you gotcha. Like horror, okay. You got Walking Dead. If you like comedy, you got Tales from the Borderlands. Um, if mm -hmm. you like really weird stuff, Wolf Among Us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You check out their older stuff, Sam and Max. If you like Detective Tales. If you like Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is there. Um, they've done Walsh and Gromit stuff. I mean, you can go on Steam and really get any of this, and pretty much any computer should run this. It's not like the most com com graphically amazing game, but it's depressing for sure. Matters but it, it's we'll miss you oh we'll miss you so i think that's where we kind of get to the end of this podcast my friend this was a yep. great discussion discussing walking phoenix as the joker discussing kingsman love discussing maniac discussing glow and discussing video games in general and i know we're kind of ending on a shitty shitty subject so yeah cody we're gonna debate well, okay something. we're gonna debate okay <sighs> What's the debate? I want you to pick a guilty pleasure franchise. Okay. Just one. Um, and then I'll pick one too. I already okay. have mine. So I gotta, say yours I gotta, when you have it. Okay. I got to think because I don't watch a lot of guilty pleasure stuff. Um, now, franchise is in three or uh, three and more. It doesn't right? matter. Two, three, four. Oh, don't okay. matter to me. Well, if we're going to talk. If we're going to talk about guilty pleasure franchises, I admit I am a big fan. Of the Scooby Doo franchise, the live action right. one with Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> no, my friend, you're about to lose this debate. <laughs> Why? What did you pick? What do you think? Um, let's see here. Knowing you, let's see. Do let's you see. know Cody? Do you know me so well? Okay, I'm trying to figure it out because the Evil Dead is definitely not guilty pleasure. They're yeah. They're all critically um, acclaimed. Though it doesn't count. Okay, so something this that's... franchise is not critically acclaimed. Okay, one of them. It, one of them is. Is it Final Destination? Fuck no, dude. Those movies suck. <laughs> okay, like uh, Friday, Friday the third. No, it's not, no a it's not a horror franchise. Okay, not a horror franchise. Let's see here. Um, trying to look at my movie shelf. Oh, there's one. There's more than too. three films. There's more than three films. Uh, more than three. Gosh. If you don't okay. get this, I'm like gonna personally be hurt. I'm trying to think because you, I yeah, I know you like a the lot. The fans of... are screaming at you. The fans are screaming at you right now. It has a lot of guilty pleasure. Is it the DCEU? <laughs> no. Okay, let me keep going. Uh, it's not Deadpool because that's awesome. It's not. Um, it's not comic book related, is it? No. No. Okay, good. The, okay, good, good, good. All right, there's more. They than are four, based yeah. on something, though. They are based on something. It's just not a comic book. Okay. Okay, so there's more I'm than like three having a seizure right now in my head. <laughs> Dude, I swear I'm going to punch myself in the face if I don't get this. And I bet I'm going to do that anyways because, gosh. Dang it. I hate you. I'm just going to tell Is you. it the Oceans films? No! How are those guilty pleasures? They're good! Except this middle one! Except for two and three. Three was good. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my god. Cody, it's the fucking Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. How do you Holy not know god. this? Okay, okay. You, you Literally, me, you could have you could have said Pirates or Transformers. Yep, I won. Fucking idiot. I you hate literally could have right said now. Transformers or Pirates. I was I hate myself so much. I was literally giving you the option. I'm like, if he says Pirates or Transformers, I'll do either one. I want to do Pirates, but I, if he says Transformers first, I'll do Transformers. 
Oh my friggin- I, I hate myself right now. I hate myself that I didn't get that, especially how much you teased me about it. I love Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, how do you not know that? Like, Pirates of the Caribbean is literally one of my favorite franchises. Like, I love it. To be honest, I don't even know why it's such a bad score on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. All the films are good. All the films are fucking okay. good. They're all fucking great, okay. to be honest. They're fucking all amazing. Like, I'm not even okay, joking. Like, you know what? You said I could have said Predator. either Transformers or Pirates. No, no I said Pirates. Bro- no, you didn't get it right. So Pirates, I'm arguing. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go, bitch. Let's fucking go. I'm going to fuck your ass up, bitch. You don't understand shit. So listen to me. Listen right here and listen to everyone listening. You know, I said you said I could say either Transformers or Pirates. You suck. Cody, shut up. Scooby Doo, <laughs> honestly, the first one is great. It, it, it's fun. It's fun, family featured. It has that nice charismatic value to it. So the, the second, second one, one. Is, the second one's ass. It's horrible. It's crap. It's not there. The music and love so is so it is pirates. Two, three, no, four, no, eight, no, five. no, no, no. Actually, no, because the first one was fantastic. But to be honest, that's not even my favorite one. After rewatching them, the second is a fucking masterpiece. And I say the are second one's a masterpiece. No, I mean, being serious. Me? The action sequences no, by Gore Verbinski no, are beautiful. Not. The score is stunning. Better than anything Scooby-Doo do ever fucking had. The yeah, well, guess what? Strong. You can have a good the score action, and good action and still be a terrible movie. The AKA action Transformers. Is, the action is great. Transformers is completely different. Transformers is ass. There's that Michael B- Bay humor in there. In this film, there's not that much humor. It's always at stakes. There's always stuff going on. Yes, Johnny Depp has his drunkenisms where the where does all the rum go? No, he doesn't know where all the rum went, but it doesn't matter. The thing is- He is that licks Pirates his brain. Let me talk. Pirates of the Caribbean has some of the best mythology in any, in any film. Yes, you can say, okay, these films shouldn't be so long. I'll agree with that. The films should not be so long. But the fact is that the mythology is super powerful in these films. The second film is a masterpiece in a lot of su- aspects because you have David Jones coming in as a villain with that mythology building in. The action is fantastic. The way that Gore Verbinski films the movie is great. It's not shaky cam action. It's not scooby dooby doo running down a hallway from something stupid. And let me tell you about the third film, Outworld's End. Yes, it is three hours long. It's way too damn long. But my Johnny God, Depp licks his brain. It doesn't matter. It's great. It's weird as hell in the first (laughs) act, but it works on all levels. The fourth film, we don't talk about the fourth film. That's kind of like the spinoff. It happened. It's a Johnny Depp story. It's kind of like Solo, a Star Wars story, but it's just on Stranger's Tides. It's never going to tie into anything else except the fifth film with the boat being small, but then Dead Men Tells No Tales is Fast and Furious mixed with pirate ships. They steal a damn vault. They carry a whole house through a whole city. He slept with a woman in that safe and still got away with no money, but just the safe. I love it. It has some of the best villains in any franchise, some of the best actors and performances. Johnny Depp, does Scooby Doo, let me tell you this. Does Scooby Dooby Doo have an Oscar nominated actor? Let me tell you, no, but Pirates of the Caribbean was nominated for quite a few things. The first one was. And let me tell you, the other ones were also nominated for visual effects because the visual effects are superb. They still hold up. And again, you can't tell me this. The score is not amazing for Pirates of the Caribbean. Whatever well, you score- think about the movies, the score is fantastic. And the score elevates each and every sequence. If Scooby Dooby Doo had the score of Pirates of the Caribbean, it would have won. My point thrown look, in, look, and I will okay. disgrace any other thing you say to me, okay. you fucking okay. bastard. Guys, we're still friends. Don't worry about no, it. You. But the this fact is, this is a fight now. <laughs> this is this is war. This is crappy news. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Fucking worst villain in the world. Fucking ass. Freddie Prince. Blackbeard. Blackbeard. I said the fourth one is just a spinoff. That 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 that, that doesn't matter. Continuity. Continuity is there. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The continuity is great. How did how did how did Will Turner get cursed after he cured the curse in At World's End? Um, that same curse. He had to take his father's place. They literally say this. They literally say. I understand he took his father's place, but they killed Davy Jones. The entire crew was cured. But they they, like to tell me no. There still has to always be someone in the Davy Jones mantle. He can let everyone go. They literally said this in the third film, fuckface. They literally said this in the third film. That everyone can, they can all be cured, but there still has to be someone boarding the Flying Dutchman. But someone that means has to man the Kraken. Into... Someone has to contain the Kraken. But the, wait, so you're telling me that even though they turned away from being crustaceans and the people 
that even after all of them went through, they Tony, turned back into Tony, when was the last time you fucking watched these movies? When was the last time you watched this movie? Last week. Shut the fuck up. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, when was the last time you watched? When was the last time you watched Scooby Doo? Be honest. Be fucking honest. Be well, fucking um, honest. When was? Be fucking well, honest right not- here. <laughs> the last time I watched Scooby Doo. Let's see here. Oh, okay, he probably doesn't like, know everyone. Bro, fuck you. You guys yes. know I won. Shut up. Shut up. It was probably about two years ago. Okay, Here's the my point. Up. My point proven. They are five dollars on Amazon for both of them. Eat my ass. I won. Fuck you. Pirates is better. You watched Pirates before Scooby Doo. Fuck you. I win. Well, here's the thing. I watched the first film before Scooby Doo. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Because, because if you liked Scooby Doo so much, you would have watched Scooby Doo over Pirates of the Caribbean. It's okay. You know what? Screw you. Because Scooby Doo, the best sucks. things about it is it sucks. it sucks. You're gonna tell me Scooby Doo sucks after you just said it was good. First one is the hor- first one's horrible. So is let's see here two, three, four, and five of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Nah, not at all. Yeah, yeah. Not really. Give me real reasons why. Okay. First of all, the script's a mess. No, it's in, not. And, no, it's not. It's yeah, a fucking mess. It is. You're it's only. You're, you're honestly going to tell me that it's an error. No, don't don't you give me it's a masterpiece. No, seriously, it's it really not. is. One, two, and three are fantastic. Five really? is incredible. All th- Four is yeah, good. You're, you're saying take taking Captain Jack Sparrow, turning him into a main character with all of his Johnny Depp isms that pretty much I ruined. Say, no, I know. No. He was not the main character in two and three still. He was at one of them. But the other two were still main characters. We're not talking about four. Four is fucking hor- four is just good. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about four. But he's not the main character. He's not the main character in the other ones. He's two still and actor. three. And technically, he When's was. When's the last time you watched these the films? Uh, fucking last week because I did a marathon. <laughs> you did a marathon. Yeah, except the fourth wow. one. I refused to watch that one. Really? I All the boring. heavy-handed humor that doesn't work from it Captain Jack. I fucking laugh. Humor is subjective, man. Humor is subjective. subjective. It doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so start talking about Scooby because I've already trashed Scooby <laughs> So you got to defend your fucking movie because I'm about to cut this off. Okay, you know what? Here's why I love Scooby Doo because both of them have a certain amount of mystery to them. Both of them are fun. Both of them are summer adventures. Both of them have great no, chemistry between, between every person in the, the cast. Fucking has horror, romance, and comedy. What other fucking franchise has that? Nothing. Nothing. Horror, romance, comedy. Um, wow. I can think of a franchise that has it that you haven't mentioned. What? Of course, we are talking about guilty pleasures here. What? <laughs> not, what not actual good movies. Okay, what movie, though? What are you saying? Carries uh, that. A, fr- a franchise that I, I still need to complete. <laughs> Evil Dead? Evil Dead? <laughs> yes! There's not that much romance in there, though. There's literally lovemaking in Pirates of the Caribbean. Really? Yes. Where? Yeah, that's mostly a whore. Bruh. Bruh. Go back and watch all the movies. <laughs> Why Scooby Doo better? I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. Uh, okay, good. I hope so. Okay, you got you got a, you got two minutes. I won't talk for two minutes unless okay, you fine. talk shit about pirates. Okay, fine. Why is Scooby Doo amazing? First of all. They accurately represented the characteristics of characters that we have grown up with for a long time. And the chemistry between Freddie Prince Jr. and the entire rest of the cast is phenomenal. Is the second film as good as the first one? No, but sequels rarely ever are. Not every film is Blade Runner 2049. The fact of the matter is, is it goofy? Yes. Is it charming? Yes. Is there? Wait, real fast. Did I buy the romance no, 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 between no, no, Shaggy no, no, no. and Velma? Yes. No, 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 no. I'm just... You said something about a sequel. Can you say that one more time for me? I not didn't hear every, 
not every film is Blade Runner 2049. Oh, see? Perfect. So not not all the pirates have to be Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Zach? Here's the fact of the matter. I don't care what anybody says. I bought the romance between Shaggy and Velma. I bought that romance right down to the bare essentials. And I thought... It- You're done. Was there some really bad dialogue? Yes. Seconds. There was there was bad dialogue in the movie, but it still comes down to the fact that it's a fun set of movies that you can sit down with your friends and have a good time with. I mean, it's not Batman and Robin. It's not the Bye Bye Man. It's not. It's Neither not the Snowman. Neither is Pirates. Which one would you rather watch, Pirates or Snowman? Which one would you rather watch, Scooby Doo or Snowman? Uh, snowman. <laughs> yeah we both know that's a lie <laughs> we don't find that if, uh, that i'd rather watch snowman than pirates eat my ass we're done with this debate you guys are <laughs> going to decide who won this debate so please comment down below and say who won cody or zach whoever won gets to pick the next debate fair enough yeah fair enough why not there we go so thank you guys so much for watching this watch youtube podcast. demonetize this as soon as it gets up <laughs> If we don't get demonetized for Entertainment Wars, we're not going to get that monetized for this. Yeah, Just being true. honest. So uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching for the sweet podcast. We really yeah. appreciate all the support. Um, you guys are seriously all the best. Make sure to catch us on iTunes as well. We're not doing SoundCloud anymore, but iTunes is better. So make sure to check us out over there. Um, before we get going, Cody, where can they find you at? All right, guys, if you want to contact me on the YouTubes, you can find me. Just search Cody Curtis in the search bar. All my reviews and videos are there. I review movies, video games, and starting to review audiobooks. That's a big party. And I, of course, can be found over here on Zach's channel doing stuff like the podcast, like Entertainment Wars, like a whole bunch of other projects we got coming down the lane. And if you want to contact me personally, you can go to pretty much any social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh stardust snapchat and either search cody curtis or underscore cody underscore curtis and you'll be able to find me at those outlets you guys are all the best thank you so much for showing up all right and of course guys go make sure to hit them up over there hit me up on sam Sean films as well go follow them on facebook go follow them on twitter and you guys can check me out here sam Sean films and soon on phoenix film critics society or phoenix film critics society's website um this was fun we are still yeah. friends. We yeah, will we shake are. the camera. We will shake through the camera. We are still fucking friends. Um, <laughs> they like each other. I'm still a little bit mad at him. I know the second this yeah. is going to be like, I'm sorry, man. Pirates is a better film. But that's fine. That, that's fine. We all know it. And I'll probably apologize and say Scooby Doo is an all right film. I still think Pirates is better. But <laughs> you, know? you, you should have not- guessed Transformers. You would have won automatically. I would have just given you the win. But it's up to you guys to decide. <laughs> So, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, stay sexy, stay sweet, stay you.